The archaeological excavation at Shankill Cross was located close to the town of Elfin in County Roscommon. The site director was Dr. Rossum Welldoon. At Shankill Cross, we found a multi period site with evidence ranging from the Neolithic up to the post medieval period. Shankill, of course, is the Irish for Old Church, and the graveyard at Shankill does house the now visible remains of a medieval church. The importance or significance of the remains of Shankill is elevated by historical references to the site, particularly by the belief and records that attribute its ecclesiastical foundation to St. Patrick. According to various references, it was the site of a pre-existing mound of a local tribe at which Patrick founded a church in 434 AD for the arch presbyter Rodan, who is supposed to have come with him from Britain. This area was geophysically surveyed in 2015 by Earthsound, and these features were targeted by archaeological testing later in 2015 and 2016 by Archer Heritage. So prior to our starting on the project, we knew there were remains at Shankill. During the excavations, we found Neolithic, Bronze Age, potentially Iron Age, early medieval, medieval and post-medieval remains. The main focus of activity was early medieval to medieval. That activity was mostly consistent with the type of archaeology you would find on the edge of an ecclesiastical site. It included agricultural and metalworking remains. One of the earliest finds on site was a Neolithic stone axe which was about five and a half thousand years old. It was made from Langdale Tuff. Researchers in England have identified Scaffold Pike and Harrison Stickle as the source of these axes. These are two mountains in that range. In other words, our axe is made from compressed volcanic dust harvested from some of the highest peaks in that part of England. If this sounds like the stuff of legend, then bear in mind that Neolithic people could probably have gotten similar types of tough axes from much easier to reach locations. Perhaps it was the source that mattered, and the people that acquired these axes really did want to get what was hardest to get. While there was ample evidence gathered of Neolithic activity at Shankill, such as napped flint and chert, and quartz crystal lithics, it will be post-excavation radiocarbon dating that will deliver definitive dates. For example, cremated bone excavated at Shank Hill has been dated to 2,800 years old. There were also some prehistoric burials at Shank Hill. In Area 3, next to R369, a cremation deposit was found at the base of a pit. Most of the cremated bone was found in a small pit at the base of a larger pit but some was also scattered through the fill of the larger pit. If you remember, I mentioned that St. Patrick's biographers said he founded a church next to mounds of a local tribe. Prehistoric burials like this would support the likelihood that there were mounds like this at Shank Hill and perhaps match up with historical records in some way. If the identification of Shank Hill as Senkel Donal from the literature is correct, we would expect to find the type of material typical of an early monastic centre, or at least the archaeology you would find on the periphery of one. We would argue that that's exactly what we found at Shank Hill. We found cereal drying kilns, metal working, grain storage platforms. All of these are the type of archaeology you would expect to find at the edge of an ecclesiastical foundation. There were four or five cereal drying kilns at Shank Hill. These are generally keyhole shaped structures or figure of eight structures in which a fire was lit in one end and the hot air was channeled up into the other end where it dried the grain. There are several reconstructions of these, one of which is shown here. Many samples of grains were gathered at the kiln sites and these are very useful for specialist analysis. So, we also found what are probably the remains of grain storage platforms or granaries at Shankill. These were night post structures, three by three meters in size, very large post holes that we have interpreted as grain storage platforms. Here you can see a nice reconstruction of the type of structure I am talking about. 
They were raised up off the ground to protect the grain from damp and possibly also rodents. What all this adds up to, the cereal drying kilns, the raised granaries, is to conjure an image of a very active agrarian landscape, at the centre of which, both religiously and economically, were the ecclesiastical foundations. There were signs of other industry too. Metalworking waste was found across the site at Shankill. It was concentrated in an area around a structure, a rectangular structure measuring about four by three metres. We believe the structure was a medieval forge, possibly of 10th or 11th century. There were three or four pits in the centre, at least one of which acted as a furnace. The others may also have been used for metalworking, and a post hole in the base of one we believe to have served as an anvil base. We believe that both iron and copper working may have taken place in the forge. This supposition is supported by fragments of crucibles and possible mould fragments. So this is one of the crucible fragments from Shankill. You can see here that there's a little foot or possibly a clamp on one side of it. There are good parallels for this from the high status Crano site at Lagore in County Meath. This is for melting fine metals, possibly copper and copper alloys, but also possibly finer metals such as silver or gold. You can see the colour on this side of the bubbling where the minerals have come to the surface when it was superheated. This combination of iron, copper and perhaps even finer metal working at Shank Hill might suggest exciting ecclesiastical objects such as bells were made at Shank Hill. Other finds at Shank Hill include shale and lignite bracelets, one of the most ubiquitous of fine types from Irish medieval sites. A lot of them originate from the ditches and a few also from structures. Most of the fragments of the shale and lignite bracelets from Shank Hill are, all, are fragments of broken um, bracelets. But this appears to be an unfinished fragment, and if so, is evidence of production at Shank Hill. There were plenty of animal bones also found at Shank Hill. Included among these were several medieval dog skeletons, at least one of which was placed in the foundation deposit in the slot of a structure. Analysis of these may help us to look at the emergence of different dog sizes, or perhaps even breeds. Recently, radiocarbon dates have been returned on a dog scapula found at Shankill, which is 860 years old, and on a fragment of dog skull, which is 1,275 years old. There were also two medieval burials. Both were of females. One was elderly and the other relatively young. This individual, the older female, was buried supine, lying on her back. At some point shortly after her burial, it was disturbed and someone lifted up and put back her femur upside down. This was done when there must have been some connective tissue still attached because the patella or kneecap was in the correct position relative to the upside down femur. There were also later medieval finds at Shank Hill. There was a 13th to 14th century thimble for sewing, possibly for regular garments, but also possibly for ecclesiastical garments. There were beads of a later medieval date, glass and ceramic, pottery, German stoneware, fragments of a Bellarmine jug from the 16th to 17th century, so at Shank Hill, we found evidence, including agricultural and industrial activity, that is consistent with what one would expect on the periphery of an early monastic and later ecclesiastical site. We found earlier prehistoric remains that included prehistoric burials, such as one would expect to find near mounds marking the territory of a tribe, such as mentioned by St. Patrick's biographers. Perhaps most excitingly, we found a site where ecclesiastical objects may have been produced, helping connect the traditions of the very early St. Axicus, St. Patrick's copper worker, with the later production of objects like the Cross of Kong in Roscommon. It is now, at the end of the dig, that the specialist analysis begins. Hundreds of samples of soil, metalworking waste, animal bones, human remains and hundreds of objects were gathered and these will be cleaned and analysed by experts. 
Recent radiocarbon dating from the human burials at Shank Hill, for example, have dated them to be approximately 1,200 years old. Though the site itself has been backfilled and returned to grass, the story of Shank Hill will be ever more deeply revealed as post-excavation work continues. <laughs>